There's only one rule in this jungle. When the lion's hungry, he eats. The Gentleman, if you would. Yeah, alright, well. So The Gentleman, it's a movie that came out, look at this, this year, holy shit. I'm actually getting into the realm of 2020 films now, and here we have what uh, looked to be, I wasn't sure, I was hoping a strong competitor for the year. So to jump right into it, we have The Gentleman, which is directed by Guy Ritchie. In case you don't know what he did, he's actually directed quite a few things. There's some more notable ones than others. Hits and misses, basically. He did the remake of Aladdin, but he also did The Man from U.N.C.L.E., which is one I actually meant to see, I'm not gonna lie, uh, but I never got around to seeing it, but I think reviews were pretty, like, you know, it was average, it was a fun time, nothing too crazy, anything like that. And then, of course, the Sherlock Holmes movie, Sherlock Holmes and Sherlock A Game of Shadows, so those movies were also, you know, if you pick them apart enough, they kind of start to fall apart, but otherwise they're still pretty good films. So, this guy's been doing movies for a long time. Most, if not more, than my own personal lifespan. So, when the trailers for this movie first came out, I was like, okay, Guy Ritchie, a gangster, epic, question mark, maybe not to the level of something like The Irishman, which I still view as kind of an overrated film. When I saw the trailer and I saw all the big names that were attached to it, I saw it as a film that was about less about the story and characters, and I, I saw what was going to be a film mostly about the star power and the actors. I'm like, okay, so... But it wasn't an 100% clear what the story was, just like, oh, you know, two factions going to war, chaos and potential hilarity ensue, so I wasn't 100% sure what I was supposed to be thinking of it going in. So I was like, all right, well, I'm going to give it its fair shake, give it its day in court, because it looks like... It could be an entertaining movie, so let's check it out. Uh, Gentleman was... Uh, g Gentleman. The Gentleman was actually uh, very good. <laughs> I really enjoyed it. It was... Uh, it didn't go on the usual checklist. It was filmed and shot well. Visual aesthetic, hence why I tried to get like more of a golden light right now to reflect that, but I don't think I succeeded very well. It was very like... The lighting palette was very like golds, very like uh, antique very very regal i would say i i do love how this entire film not to get off on a tangent here but i'm going to the entire film like was the uh about the epitome of class even in the mob world from the care the main characters to the antagonists and all that like it was very classy and it was about you know how you dressed how you spoke which they speak uh very uh british dialects in this movie not to say that it's all like oh, but like you know, there's some slang and some terminology that if you're not, if you've never seen anything from B, uh, from the BBC, then you're probably going to be lost. So, as uh, the franchise was when we went to go see it, there were a few times in the first 20 minutes where I could audibly hear him being like, what the, what the hell are they saying? But the gentleman uh, looks great. The cast is a fantastic, the cast does a great job, and I really enjoyed what the cast did with this movie because... It's every single cast member is their own unique character that all come together to make this like very similar ensemble. But all these, it's like it's like Guy Ritchie was like, "All right, guys, here's your character, go nuts," <laughs> and everything from mannerisms to speech, dialect, pat, like everything, like every single character, all these actors played were fully, completely, and appropriately embodied by said actors that was really enjoyable to watch these characters that were brought to life and i was a little bit concerned that maybe that'd be all the movie would have to offer is oh we have this cast of unique of, of, of very talented actors that are now going to bring forth these great characters but no nah, they brought more than that they along with guy Ritchie, brought something to the table that i don't often see in an r-rated gangster or, or crime film and that is restraint that's the craziest part, because when you have an R rating, it's pretty much like, oh, everything's off the table. It's kind of like watching, I don't know, Kick-Ass or, or Irishman, I guess. Like you, you, yeah. Usually an R rating, people will kind of take the, take the ball and run with it. They will really go all out with the uh, everything from violence to profanity to the sex, the nudity. But this film did something miraculous, and that was the R rating, in my opinion, was almost exclusively for the, uh, for the language. Because they definitely have, uh, there's a lot of foul language in this film. 
This film, yeah, it is riddled with uh, pro pro profanity. There we do. What the f is this? Watch your profanity. And it, yeah, they, 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 the director and the actors don't shy away from it. But what they do shy away from, and I was very surprised, is violence. Most of the violence in this film, I don't want to say, this isn't really a spoiler to the, to the story. I'm just telling you a general point that I really admire about this film. Most of the violence in this film is implied and not shown. I mean, the, not to say there isn't any violence at all shown, because there is violence in this film, but where other people would show people getting their brains blown out, or people getting fingers cut off, or potentially having intercourse with animals, you'll, if you watch the movie, you'll understand. <laughs> this film doesn't. It, I don't want to say it shies away from it, but it, it, cause it still manages to maintain those very dark undertones, or overtones, I guess, these dark undertones in the film, and uh, nothing kind of goes over your head. Like, you get what's going to happen to certain people and what has happened, but... And I think it works for the film, because the film's still trying to be like, oh, there's there's class, there's still... They're still... They're criminals, but they're gentlemen, and they just do what has to... What they, what they believe has to be done, and that's kind of what happens. In terms of the script, I thought it was great. I'm a fan of, uh, of like, British comedy, so any, it, it's like, you know, Hot Fuzz, Shaun of the Dead, at World's End, that quick... Razor sharp, like the big jokes are here, small jokes are underlying. It's like listening to a Bo Burnham song. Like months later, you could watch it. Years later, you could watch it again. You're like, oh wait, there was another joke hidden in there, or like a little reference. I get that. And like people's sense of humor is always like so out there, a little bit twisted, even in the characters they're playing. Hugh Grant as Fletcher, for example. Like, oh my god. I want you to play a game with me, Ray. I don't want to play a game. Oh please. No. I said play a game with me, Ray. Man. Right. Lovely. What a filthy man, but like, the humor just kept going. I was like, this guy, this guy's ridiculous. I, I'm, I'm with it. I'm here for it, but this guy is absolutely ridiculous. This film is very stylistic. Not so much, I mean, now, I don't want to directly compare it to like Tarantino's work because Tarantino is stylistic in terms of like, directly what you're seeing on screen. This film has a lot of like, you know, cutaways, visual representations. I don't want to say use terms like PowerPoint, but there's a lot of visual examples of what's going on in the film, and it's like, oh, I picture, that I want to tell you a story, and then all of a sudden it's like, it's like everything turns into like a, a film reel, and then you have like a, a cinema camera powering up, and he's like, all right, and then action, and like that, it'll just show all of that. It's not, you know, too hammy or cheesy. It all kind of comes together, and I enjoyed it. The only part where it fell flat on again, I hate having to give this review to a movie, but it's just. A lot of movies out that you know there will be some movies out there that are fantastic films that I will 100% give a five out of five every time that I see it, and there are some films that almost in my for my biased opinion almost just barely get to that cusp of it, but aren't quite there. And for me, The Gentleman was that. It's another movie where I wasn't you know on the edge of my seat the entire time. I was surprised by how tense I got in some scenes and how captivated I was by the performances some actors were bringing to the table. Matthew McConaughey and uh, Charlie Hunnan, did I do my research properly? They were two of the particular standouts for me. I mean, granted, Hugh Grant did a fan now, a fan, a phenomenal job with uh, the character that he was trying to portray and succeeded. But there was just something missing, like from the again, it was something from from the narrative and from the overall like, just from the movie itself. Where I didn't walk out of there being like, oh my god, I loved that. But I did walk out thinking, wow, that was a a really fantastic movie. I think I'm probably going to buy it on Blu-ray when it comes out. I really enjoyed it, but it wasn't like a perfect movie for me. There was something missing, I think, narratively, and just the way that, like, just the story, and it lacked a certain punch that I was looking for, I think, maybe. Um, whether that was because the trailers showed some key scenes a little bit, or whether that was because I just figured it should have ended a certain way, or, or I think the tone in certain places got a little bit wonky just just a little bit like the tone was fairly consistent but then i think that's the reason why i'm detracting a little bit from my rating here between the between the story and my personal gripes with it but also the fact that like there's a few moments where like i wasn't sure exactly what tone this movie was trying to go for like was it trying to be all comedy all dark comedy was it trying to be comedy with some like drama mixed in because there are moments that got pretty dramatic was it trying to be a, a drama that was also comedic like I think arguably it's supposed to be like a a crime a, a crime comedy 
just a, just a crime comedy, but hard to say. So for that reason, <laughs> uh, I will give The Gentleman, came out this year, 2020, a rating of 4 out of 5. I'd say The Gentleman is definitely a fun time. Go see it in theaters. It just came out like a week, a week ago or so. About a week ago. Long story short, that's my review of The Gentleman. Uh, came out this year. I thought it was really good. It's uh, a good lot for like an early... To, for, an, for an early year movie, especially a January release, I thought it was a it, they, they, it was a good movie. Like I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Don't take my not complete five out of five rating as a detriment. Usually, if anything gets a three or higher for me, I'm recommending to at least either see it for yourself or definitely go check it out. In this case, the gentleman is a hundred percent worth your time. It's fun. It's funny. Just a just a little bit of the ultra violence, and it was just a, a good time overall. So. That's my opinions on The Gentleman. What did you think? If you agreed or disagreed, comment below and feel free to argue with me on the point or tell me how I'm unsophisticated and I'm wrong about it. Otherwise, comment a movie you'd like me to review, whether it's come out now or coming out in the future. I will do my best to work my way down that list and get to that film right for you as soon as I can. In the meantime, thank you guys and gals so much for watching and stay tuned for the next uh, review that I do. So goodbye, travelers.